educational equity initiatives simply aren't working or aren't working well enough. Between the two of us, Floyd and John, we've dedicated decades to helping schools and districts become more inclusive, fair, and just. Along the way, we've critiqued approaches to equity that have fallen short of their goals. We've noticed stagnation, regression, and even backlash. By categorizing our observations, we've established a predictable pattern of equity initiative failure. We have a big problem in equity work, a problem that any educator serious about equitable change dare not dismiss. In this book, we're going to present our proposed theory and solution. Inclusion, belonging, and dignity are the keys to success in equity work. We believe that these keys have not been identified and understood, or they've been falsely assumed, undervalued, or ignored. For equity initiatives to succeed, we believe that educators must focus on shaping inclusive environments intentionally designed to foster a sense of belonging by honoring the dignity of each and every person. We're not criticizing equity work as such. The questions we raise in this book are not intended as an attack on educational equity theorists. Their work has gotten us thus far, and for that we are grateful. Rather, our questions revolve around why current approaches are not working, or not working well enough. And our thesis applies research on engaged practice, policy analysis, and academic research from a variety of disciplines, some of which, as far as we know, have not hitherto been applied explicitly to equity in education. We are comparing the assumptions and presuppositions of our numbers obsessed current system against research that looks at the larger perspective of how human nature and motivation actually function. It is our contention that our current system views students not as full human beings, but in a partial way, as units of achievement or non-achievement. In short, what we are criticizing is the common implementation of equity initiatives within our schools. To state the obvious, it's possible to do the right thing, but in the wrong way. Despite living thousands of miles apart, Floyd in Colorado, John in Maryland, we've noticed the same pattern of equity initiative failure within our local schools and districts. We've listened to colleagues across the nation, and they report the same dynamics. Furthermore, we've learned from our own mistakes as active participants in the very same pattern. Regardless of geographic region or size of the school or district, educational equity initiatives are not leading to meaningful change. Of course, that's a general statement. In small pockets, some initiatives are getting positive results, but those efforts haven't been influential enough to change the system at large. In most cases, the initiatives have proven predictably disappointing. We've outlined this pattern in what we call the dysfunctional cycle of equity work. 